In recent years, we've seen major advancements in the metaverse and virtual reality meeting solutions. The ability to meet virtually in 3D from anywhere will be a key enabler for the future of hybrid work. But it also lacks that sense of physicality, which is so important when we meet and work together. In this work, we are interested in creating blended realities. Blended reality solutions enable people to leverage their local physical spaces for distributed meetings. Hi and welcome to my talk. I am Jens Miel Grønbæk and this work is a collaboration between co-authors from Aarhus University, the University of Melbourne and Lancaster University. Our paper contributes the concept of partially blended realities, a novel approach and system for distributed mixed reality meetings that blends remote users' distinct rooms into a coherent collaboration space. We also outline a design space and a set of recommendations based on insights from a user study. So why is it important to blend remote people's spaces? Blending is needed to provide a shared frame of reference so that our nonverbal cues remain consistent. We all know from video conferencing that the lack of a shared reference frame means we cannot have proper eye contact or reference objects in the space around us by pointing to them. Systems known as blended interaction spaces solve this with high-end solutions for video conferencing or mixed reality room capture. In contrast to virtual reality, these solutions require that the meeting spaces need to be physically designed to fully align into a blended space. But in the shift to hybrid work, people increasingly need the flexibility to meet and collaborate from anywhere, whether it's in a dedicated meeting room, the home office or a cafe at the airport. This means that future mixed reality solutions cannot assume that people's individual spaces can be fully aligned. Imagine Alice and Bob collaborating around their local desks and whiteboards. Alice's whiteboard is behind her desk and Bob's whiteboard is to his right. When they move from the table to the whiteboard, they arrive at different locations in the blended space, and this is due to the relative differences between their rooms. Let's convince ourselves that this is the case. Here we want Alice and Bob to sit face to face as if seated around the same meeting table. As we notice here, when the tables are aligned, the whiteboards cannot be aligned at the same time. Related work has suggested solutions that would be able to fully align these two spaces. But with these solutions, the consequence is that either the spaces or the avatars are distorted. In this work, we propose an alternative that only partially aligns spaces. Our approach is inspired by the literature on computer-supported collaborative work, showing that people tend to collaborate around physical surfaces, such as tables and whiteboards. We capture this idea in the novel concept of partially blended realities, which incorporates people's local surfaces as the core anchor points for blending distributed spaces. Rather than full 3D room capture, this method of merely aligning surfaces is not only feasible, but also practical and easy to prototype. And it aligns well with the theories of collaboration. So how do users transition between tables and whiteboards? We demonstrate two different techniques to do so. Via the realignment technique, users can trigger a button that switches from aligning around the table to aligning around the whiteboard. With the overlay technique, all partial alignments are overlaid at once, and Alice sees Bob twice as an avatar located relative to each partial alignment. We conducted a qualitative study to investigate how pairs of users experience these techniques in a remote collaboration task. While we came up with several other technique variations, we found that the selected techniques enabled us to ask fundamental questions about the overall concept. Before posing these questions and our answers to them, I'll first describe the study design. Our study had three conditions. The first two conditions were our two techniques, where the spatial setup had different relative relations between the surfaces. As a third condition, we introduced physical alignment, where the spaces are always fully aligned by having the same physical setup. This condition served as the gold standard by which our techniques could be compared. Across pairs, all conditions were counterbalanced. We designed a task to focus on the user experience of transitioning between surfaces. The task was a collaborative card game where the goal was for one player to guess the murder amongst a set of suspect cards. Without talking about the cards, the other player had to communicate by grabbing and moving the cards between surfaces. This enabled us to systematically take users through a range of different transitions between surfaces. And by controlling the user's movements in this way, we made sure that they experienced the same transitions across conditions. The study was designed to answer three fundamental questions. The first question is, how does partial alignment affect the user experience? 
And to answer this general question, we prompted users in interviews to describe how our techniques compare to the gold standard of physical alignment. The second question is specific to the realignment condition. We ask when and how do users trigger realignment? The third question focused on the overlay condition, where we ask how do users manage and shift their attention when presented with multiple partial alignments? I'll now present a brief overview of our study results in order to answer these questions. Overall, we found that the illusion of sharing the same surface was effective. This is evident in this quote. It felt natural when sitting together at the table. But when transitioning between surfaces, we found that uncanny effects frequently happened. For instance, to describe the realignment condition, a participant said, I was not happy that she transitioned through me to get to the whiteboard. In this clip here, you can see an example of a transition which conveys that uncanny feeling of one's personal space being invaded. During realignment, these incidents were often caused by poor negotiation and timing of using the trigger button. For the overlay condition, we found that attention switching between avatars was hard at first. The initial confusion was due to experiences like in this quote, I feel like I talk to you and you stand next to me but you are looking at the one standing away from me. But surprisingly, despite these initial confusions, several pairs quickly got used to this experience. We use our study insights to propose recommendations for designing transitions. For the realignment technique, we propose to constrain the trigger to be a shared button rather than a private button, and only place the button at the origin surface of the transition. This way the space is realigned before the pairs move. For the overlay technique, several pairs suggested a variation that fades between layers. Here we demonstrate how fading can support Alice's mental switching to the avatar of Bob that is next to the whiteboard. The fading here could be triggered based on a proximity boundary to the surface. For a broader discussion on the design space of different techniques and their trade-offs, I recommend that you check out our paper. But if there's only one thing you take away from this research, it should be this. Hybrid work requires flexibility to meet from anywhere. This means that people in practice will meet across distinct spaces with layouts that do not align. Partially blended realities shows a practical solution to this that harnesses how people already meet around physical surfaces. This is an important step towards realizing mixed reality meetings for the future of hybrid work.